All right, let's finally get to monoids. So let me actually open group theory. Where is it? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, I'm just going to do... Oh, it's on the right. It's on the right. Okay, so it's over there. Okay, so what is a monoid? A monoid is just a semi-group. A monoid is just a trade monoid of A. It extends a semi-group of A, right? So what it has, it has this unique... Uh, identity element, right? Which is also called seed or zero or, um, uh, or or just identity sometimes. Okay, so we're just gonna call it like this, right? And it has override, override protected def laws, which is a set of law. Okay, like this. So it has exactly the same laws, right? But it also has the identity laws now. It has the identity laws, and the identity laws just take in the operation, and also the unique identity element, right? So before we were using just the operation, but now we have another thing to play around with. So we need to create uh, this identity thing. Okay, also let me duplicate that. Go down over here and also call this one monoid. Okay, so now we can go. In fact, I'm going to, hold on, too many arguments for method unique identity element. What? This is not what you should complain about. 35, 35. How are you complaining about this? That's not that's not what's happening. In any case, we need, we need to go and define. Oh, identity, right? So, um, so in pre-def, uh, there is a method called um, uh, there is a method defined uh, there is a method defined on pre-def called identity, and this is what it's probably probably trying to do. Yeah, it's 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 try, trying to call this identity function. Okay, so uh, let's go and um, let's just close everything over here, right? So we have just just a package uh, object over here, and we want to create another law for uh, for the identity. So I'm just going to copy that. And I'm going to go down over here and I paste it like this. I'm going to say this is identity. And as we have just seen, we need also this unique identity element, right? So unique identity element uh, like this of A, right? So we have the operation, we have the unique identity element, and let's see uh, what, what the laws are going to look like. Okay, so we're just going to go and say for all. And we for this, we need just one A, right? So we can just do A like that, okay? So uh, let's also do this form it off thing, form it off and form it on, okay? So as I just said, pre-def actually has this uh, function, so we can actually call it pre-def identity of A. It should be A, right? So I'm just gonna leave it like this, okay? So the thing is that if we have A.combine unique identity element, then it shouldn't affect the, um, the, the A, right? So A should still come out. Uh, so this is called the left identity. Let me create a bit more space, like, whoops. This is the left identity like that, and the right identity is the other way around. So it's like this, combine A equals A, right? So this is going to be the right ident identity, okay, like this. Okay, so this is the left one, and let's also have that one over there like this okay so uh we already have a few a few tests around uh and we already know that that uh they're actually monoids so we can go and say that this is the int addition it is not just a semi-group it is actually a monoid right and if it is a monoid then it means that it has this unique identity element right so we can go over here and we can say that it doesn't only have the um the operation it also has a final override you can make it a lazy val uh, unique identity element uh, which is an integer and it is a zero for example right we can do the same thing for for strings um whoa what's up oh yeah so now it actually collides with with our monoids so let's go and um, collides with this monoid that we have over here so let's actually the time maybe has come to to remove this so i'm gonna do homegrown package collections import math uh, library and now it's not called seed it's called uh, where is it um, unique identity element over here right uh, dot underscore dot underscore like this all right so that should compile but the test shouldn't compile yeah the test don't compile because of this mostly unique identity element like this so which tests are these it's list suite uh, 159 okay so everywhere we say seed we can pretty much say unique identity element isn't that enough uh, ba, 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 ba. Um, report dot monoid okay hold up report dot monoid it's monoid blah, blah blah unique identity element that's fine we can actually make it a 
lazy val um, operation. We can also make it a lazy val. Oh, it needs an arbitrary. I'm no, just going to go over here instead um, and just say uh, final override protected uh, lazy val arbitrary, which is an arbitrary off report. Why do I say arbitrary? Arbitrary, arbitrary. There we go. Okay, so we can just go to report and just get the the arbitrary, which is which is down over here. Okay, let's see. It errors. Okay, so uh, not found value. Hold up, we need more space. Um, not found value unique identity element. Hold up. Let's go to one five six and let's see. Oh, and this one is still called seed. Unfold left. This is seed. This is seed. Okay. Uh, what else? One five one. One five one. Oh, we have more of these. I replaced too much. Okay, so this is a seed, and um, yeah, this is commented out, but still, let's do let's do seed, and over here, seed. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. So uh, now that we have that we have monoids, and uh, we know that monoids have to abide to these laws, right? So um, combining with the with the unique identity element is not gonna not gonna destroy anything. So we can go to list suite, and we can realize that we actually ha didn't need to do this whole thing, right? This zero plus uh, is unnecessary, right? Because this is the identity element, and it doesn't do anything. Okay, we can. I mean, this is commented out, but still. Uh, what else do we have? Okay, actually, we can throw this one out. Actually, we can throw both of these out like this, okay? Uh, but the same thing over here, like prepending an empty list uh, to another list is not going to change anything, okay? The same thing for, for the reports, right? So we don't need this this blah, so everything gets actually shorter like this. It's going to fit into one line yet, actually. Whoops. Whoa, what did I just do? Like that. That's what I wanted to do. Now it actually fits into one line, and we can do this okay so uh now you can see over here list abc aggregated should be abc uh this is exactly exactly what we wanted because because we know that all our, all the tests hold we can actually do this so we can actually go back to package and also make sure that um that the string concatenation is also a monoid it is a monoid uh, it has a unique identity element like this which is a string which is just an empty empty string like this we can actually go to the uh, group theory group theory suite and we can make sure that we're testing the monoid laws right we haven't been doing this okay so this is a monoid now um, in fact we actually don't no i'm gonna leave the types okay i'm gonna leave the types uh we can actually go back to lists as well right uh go down and in fact maybe maybe i can copy copy this so i can copy that list okay Put it over here the unique identity element for a list of a is just going to be an empty list okay so we can just do list dot empty list dot empty a uh what is one oh yeah it's a monoid it's a monoid like this in fact can we just use empty i think we can just use empty right like this can we yeah we can okay so let's go and do the same thing for the sets At the very bottom go over here paste it over there Right, so it's going to be the same thing, but just for sets, but for monoids. All right, I believe we have we have all of them. All right, now group theory keeps going a little bit further. We're obviously not going to cover uh, all of it, but we're we're still going to cover a few a few uh, bits and pieces. Uh, the next law that we're going to have, in fact, let me close all the other tabs. In fact, uh, maybe I'm also going to destroy everything on the right like this. Okay, so this way, this way we have uh, we have way more space. Uh, we're running all the tests. Uh, cool. Okay, so the next uh, law that we're gonna we're gonna talk about is going to be invertibility. So I'm gonna copy this probably like this, and I'm gonna call it invertibility. Let's hope that it is spelled like this. So invertibility also um, wants a unique inverse inverse element. Right, so unique means unique for every element, right? So it's going to be a, a, like this, right? So it's a function, right? So you give it one element and it's going to inverse it. Okay, so uh, now we're going to say that for all a's, okay, like this, you're going to do this format off thing, format off thing, and format on thing, right? So you're going to say that if you combine, if you do a combine, and if you get the unique inverse element, unique inverse element for 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 this for this a. Right, so if you combine the element with its inverse, then what should combine, uh, what should come out is the unique identity element. 
right? Unique identity element like this. And the other, other way around as well, right? So if you swap them, so if you go like this and you combine it with A, right? Then it should still come out, right? Unique identity element should still come out. Uh, we can do, why is it not the same thing? Uh, unique inverse element, there we go like this, right? So it should it should, should have the same lengths, right? So uh, for example, if we're talking about integers, integers, if we have a random integer, like for example, three, and we combine it, right? Com combine means addition, right? If we do plus, uh, what is the inverse element of, of three? Well, it's the negative three. So if we combine it with a negative three, then what should come out is the identity element, which is zero, right? And it's the same, the same gonna be with, with the other way around, right? In just a few seconds, we're going to learn about commutativity. Uh, commutativity means that you can change the order. So commutativity means that you can change the order for all the elements, and it's just going to work. In this case, it only it only works with the with the inverse, right? So you can combine with the inverse with with um, with any order, and it's going to be it's going to be fine. But again, it, it works for for any number, right? So I can just type in whatever I want here. It's going to work for for any number, right? It's going to work for for all numbers, right? So let's go back to uh, group theory group theory like this gonna go down and so the next structure is gonna be called a group right for the groups group theory so we're gonna have a trait trait called group of a and it extends a monoid of a right and it's gonna have this unique uh, not identity it's gonna have unique inverse element which is a function from a to a right so it's gonna have uh, override uh, protected protected uh, laws, which is just a set of laws, right? So it's going to have all the previous laws, plus it's going to have the invertibility, invertibility like this, right? So it needs the operation, it needs the unique identity element, and it needs the unique uh, inverse, unique inverse element like, like this. Okay, uh, what's up there? Uh, type is match where group theory 48, 48 over here, uh, oh, Oh, they both start with I, Jesus. Okay, which one was first? Um, identity was first. Okay, so this is ID like this. There we go. Okay, so now we can go to, um, to, to the package and we can say that this is actually a group. Uh, group like this. So I can go to group theory over here. I can take this guy right so i can also say final override lazy val paste it's def like this right well what is the inverse for for addition well it's just the uh negative of whatever comes in right so a comes in a negative a comes out right so it's just a negative underscore negative underscore i admit it looks kind of funny uh but it is what it is and it's not a's it's integers int and int Okay, so now we can go to group theory suite and we can say that this is actually an entire uh, an entire group like this, right? It's not going to work for strings though, right? So you might be able to, see, you know, you might want to, you, you might be tempted to, to, to think that, you know, reversing a string, for example, is something like an inverse, right? But we can try it out. That's exactly why, you know, why I created it like this, that we can just go and, and, and try it out, right? So we can go here, say strings, and you could think that, you know, reversing a string uh, might, might somehow make it make it into a group, uh, but but it's not right. So let's make it a group. Group, right? It's gonna compile, sure. Uh, but if we go to group suite and we put a, a group over here, right? It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna throw an exception, and it's gonna say, uh, okay, that's that's the wrong one. Hold on, no class that found. Hold up. There we go. All right, let's go up. What? Could not initialize. Oh, it couldn't couldn't initialize the entire package. Oh, that that kind of sucks. So this this is happening because you know because we are um, uh, first of all we're throwing in the in in the in the constructor and this entire thing is defined in the package object. But in any case, it 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 throws because this is not a group, right? So invertibility, in fact, is not an easy property to come by, right? So we're gonna reverse it to. Uh, to monoid, right? So this is why also you know monoids are are kind of uh, kind of important for uh, for programming because monoids they're sort of lurking everywhere, right? Every time you need to aggregate something, uh, it is a monoid, right? But invertibility does not just come come around uh, so easily, All right? So let me go to group theory. Oh yeah, I forgot actually to create a summoner. Summoner. We're not gonna we're not gonna use these summoners, but you know I, I sort of want to make it look like um, like a math library. Okay, so we're gonna say group like this. Um, 
one of the last laws that we're going to ha have is the commutativity. It's going to look pretty much exactly like invertibility, but it's going to work for um, for all the elements, not only for the for the for the inverse elements. Okay. So, uh, in fact, I'm just going to going to go to magma, and I'm going to take all of this. I think to the closure. Okay. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say that this is commutative. Commutativity commutativity okay right so uh, commutativity basically says that you can change the order right so associativity is basically you can change the grouping commutativity means you can change the um, you can change the order right so a1 dot combine a2 is the same as a2 dot uh, combine a1 like this a group that is also commutative is called an abelian group uh, i actually have no idea how to pronounce it and we're going to use this abelian um, a bit more um, uh, more than once so we're going to create a trait called uh, abelian a i'm going to say that it extends uh, just a magma a right and it has uh, this law set of law and it's going to be super dot loss uh, plus commuta commutativity of the operation have I done it like this as well? Yeah, commutativity of the operation. Uh, let's see if it compiles. All right, so we actually don't need uh, don't need a summer for for an abelian group. Okay, so uh, what we can do uh, sorry for abelian, but we need a summer for abelian group. So we're gonna do a trait uh, trait abelian abelian group. I really have no idea if I pronounce it correctly. Right, so this is a group, right? But it is also abelian abelian. Abelian of A, okay, and uh, everything that we need is already defined uh, in terms of this trait, so we don't need we don't need a body, okay. So this is going to be an abelian abelian group like this. All right, not found type. This means that there is a type of somewhere. There we go, abelian abel abelian like this. All right, so now we can go to our uh, group theory suite, and we can actually say no over here into package, and we can actually say that our ints. Uh, they're not only a group; they're actually an abelian group. By the way, these whole uh, algebraic structures—they—they uh, um, they are um, a, an involvement uh, of of integers, right? So the first the first structure was, was integers, right? So uh, in fact, this operation is usually called also sum uh, because you know this whole algebraic structures um, um, theory, let's say, um, it, it it stemmed from uh, from from integers. Okay, so we can go to this, uh, group theory suite, and over here we can say that this is also an abelian group, and this way the commutativity is also going to be tested, and obviously it's gonna it's gonna work, right? Three plus five is the same as five plus three. All right, so the next law is distributivity. I actually thought that it's called distribution, uh, but Wikipedia says distributivity, so I'm gonna use distributivity. So we're gonna have uh, distributivity, or as I like to call it, the high school law, arbitrary. Okay, because everybody learns it in high school, but then people forget. Okay, so uh, for this, we need two binary operations, actually. So we're going to have, uh, one is going to be called plus. As I already said, everything is uh, modeled after integers. So we're going to have closed binary operation of A over here. And the other one is going to be called times, right? Plus and times like this. Okay, so uh, it's going to produce a law, same as before. We're going to have uh, for all. And for this case, we need three of them, A1, A a2, A, A3, A. Notice that this time we don't need a magma, actually, because um, uh, the compiler is going to confuse if we have a magma for, for this operation or for this operation because they have the exactly the same types. Okay, so um, let's do the format off thing. Format off and format on like this. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have just a few comments and I'm just going to spell it out. So this is the high school law because in high school you learn that A1 times A2 plus a3 is the same as a1 times a2 plus a1 times a3 right and also the other way around so this is uh, this is the uh, left uh, distributivity and this one is going to be the right distributivity so if you have a2 plus a3 right and then times a1 right so this is just uh, like the commutativity of the of the le left thing okay that it is going to be a2 times a1 plus a3 times a1, right? So this is the right distributivity, okay? And now I'm going to spell it out with, you know, with, with, with code because now we have to use the, um, not the infix notation, but the the other one. What's it called? I'm going to call it the, 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 the method notation, okay? So basically, if we have a plus of a2 and a3, right? So it's this one. 
and then if we have times of a1 and n this plus over here, right, then it should be the same as having a plus of times a1 and a2. If you do enclosure or any sort of lisp, then uh, you know you're used to this. And we have times a1, a3. Uh, let's just pray that I didn't make a mistake over here. I'm going to say end times plus a2, a3, and now we're going to do a1, right? So it's just swapped, then swapped, and uh, it should be it should have exactly the same length, shouldn't it? Right over here, over here. That's a problem. There we go. Uh huh caught you okay so now we're gonna have plus and then we're gonna have times and um, there should be a comma over here and there should be another another times over there so over here we're gonna have a2 a1 and over here we're gonna have times of a3 a1 and what's up with the braces we probably don't need don't need this one like that okay that should be fine let's see if it compiles it doesn't arbitrary oh my god arbitrary there we go arbitrary all right so this structure is called a ring okay so we're gonna have over here we're gonna have a trait ring a it extends an abelian group abelian group of a right and what it needs it also needs another monoid Right, so for example, the addition and the uh, multiplication, as we have seen, uh, as, we, as we have seen over here, right? So uh, now that it has that, it can do. Um, by the way, I forgot to use protected over here. Override protected def. Okay, so in fact, I'm going to duplicate that, bring it down like this. So we're going to have super dot laws plus that laws right from that monoid plus we're going to have the distributivity like this right with this operation and that operation like this and we also need a summoner like this summoner for the for the ring like that let's see uh what's up does not conform to a ring and package mass library uh, access has taken place oh right the protective thing is actually causing causing issues okay so let's do protected def laws like this and just say def laws and also let's go to uh to the algebraic algebraic structure and also let's not make it protected okay let's do it like this all right so this is our our ring and in order to have the ring we actually need to uh, need to introduce another monoid for uh, for the multiplication so we can go to uh package and we can go to bah, 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 bah. this is int addition. I'm just gonna copy that. I'm going to paste it over here, and I'm gonna say int int multiplication. And um, by the way, again, uh, multiplication actually can only go to mono to the monoid for for integers, right? Because as soon as you have the inverse, you have division, and if you have division, then you're gonna you're gonna um, uh, you're gonna have issues because uh, because the integer division is is, is weird uh, because you know half of it like gets gets stripped away and stuff. Okay, so uh, this is just a monoid, uh, and for the mono, it, it means that it doesn't have the inverse. Okay, so we have the int multiplication. Now let's also go to group theory suite and also have int um, multiplication multiplication, right? Which is just a monoid okay like this so that we can we can test the uh the laws uh let's go to uh package again and now we can say that int addition is actually a ring and it has a final override uh, lazy val that which is a monoid of of ints in fact let's put it down let's put it down over over there okay like this that and this is going to be int multiplication and it might need to be a lazy val now actually because it's down there let's see if it works yeah it doesn't work so let's make it a lazy val lazy val let's make this one a lazy val as well lazy val like this i hope that this was the issue no it wasn't there's still there's still an issue Oh yeah, I actually forgot to change it to multiplication. All right, so this is the multiplication, and the identity element is actually one for the multiplication. Okay, I copy pasted everything, but I actually forgot to make it uh, an actual multiplication. Okay, so it failed a few times, but this time it should actually work. Come on, be green. Let me show me show me some green. Maybe I need to scroll up. No. Oh, out of memory, out of memory. That's not cool. So let's just press enter. 
Let's let's kill it actually. Oh, it's still doing something. Die. All right, finally die. Let's go in again. Run all the tests, and this time this time it should be fine. All right. So now there are also some uh, relaxed combinations of of the algebraic structures that we have, and um, sort of in the in the group theory. So the first one is going to be a rung, and it's spelled it's pronounced rung, but it's spelled as R N G. So it's basically a ring without the I, uh, meaning that it's a ring without the identity element, right? And we're going to actually put it um, in between the uh, ring and and the group. Okay. So we're going to say that this is a trait R N G, but it's pronounced rung and it extends abelian abelian group of a and it's going to have that which is actually a semigroup right so a semigroup right so um so it doesn't need to be a monoid because uh, uh, rng or, or rung is a ring without the identity element on the monoid right and therefore it's not going to be a monoid Okay, and by the way, um, you're going to see a bit later that it's actually cool that um, because it's in the covariant position, uh, our ring is actually going to extend um, RNG, right? So, um, so this thing is still, is still going to work, right? It's still going to compile. So, um, in fact, uh, the laws are the same. So, we can actually just move the laws up. We just do it like this, okay? Right? So, a, a ring, right? It's just a rung. Uh, but uh, it, it needs it needs the identity element of the semi group and therefore it needs to be uh, it needs it to be a monoid. Uh, let's also create a summoner for for the rung like this R R N G R N G okay like that. The last one that I'm going to show you is is the um, the so called rig and it's just, it's a ring without without the end right without the negative without the without the inverse and for that I'm going to copy the abelian group because we're going to need a monoid. Uh, I'm going to put it down over here. So we need an abelian monoid. Whoops, too much. Abelian, abelian monoid, right? Which is just a monoid with an abelian, like this. Okay, so now we're going to have the rig, trait rig of A, uh, extends abelian, abelian monoid of A, right? It still needs another monoid, that, which is a monoid of A. And it's going to have pretty much the same laws. So we can actually go and copy the laws, right? So uh, everything uh, like like rings or you know rugs or or, or rigs, uh, they need the, uh, they need to add this distributivity law. And let's also have this summoner, summoner like that. Okay, so we have the we have the rig over here. Cool. And the last one that I'm going to show you is the semi ring. So for this, we need an abelian uh, semi group. Right, which is just a semi group uh, with commutativity, abelian semi semi group. And by the way, like I'm showing you a lot, but this is you know it's probably not even a half of group theory. Okay, so we're gonna have a trait a trait semi uh, ring of A, which extends an abelian uh, semi group of A. Right, it has a def that, which I believe is a monoid. Uh, maybe it's not even a monoid. Maybe it's just a. Uh, it is just a. Um, it's just a semi group. I'm actually not not sure, and it's going to have the same laws over here, right? So, ta da! There we go. Okay, like like that. Also, in the beginning, I showed you integers and strings and lists, but only integers actually uh, went up to uh, to to rings and stuff. So, what I want to show you is, um, I also want to show you an example of of a rig. Um, so I'm going to define it probably, probably somewhere over here. So I'm going to say um, it's going to be a bit more, um, a bit more involved. Uh, not like too involved. It's just going to be a little bit different. So uh, first of all, we're going to have a trait called uh, Boolean addition monoid, right? So it's going to be for Booleans, by the way. It's going to be monoid for Boolean. Okay. So now over here, we're going to have the. Um, I'm just going to copy all of that because that's a monoid. Okay, so I'm just going to go for for booleans, right? And I'm going to say that this is an or. I'm going to call it addition, okay? And this is a false, right? So uh, if you have a false and you do or, then whatever is on the other side is going to win, right? So if, if, if there is a false on the other side, then the result is going to be false. If there is a true on the other side, it's, it's going to remain true. Okay, so let's see if it compiles. Yeah, it looks like it does. And over here, I'm also going to have an object. Boolean addition monoid. It extends Boolean addition addition monoid. Okay, and we're going to use this addition monoid in 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 the rig in in just a few seconds. Okay, so now I can go over here and I can say that there is an implicit uh, object Boolean um, 
addition and it extends a rig of boolean right and now it extends this trait and this is exactly why i created it right so it extends uh this trait over here um sorry whiz with this uh, trait over there, right? And all it does is it does final override uh, lazy val that, which is a monoid for Boolean. And this is going to be the Boolean uh, multiplication monoid. This is the one that we don't, we don't have yet. So now I'm gonna copy everything over here. I'm gonna paste it in over here and I'm gonna call it uh, boolean doo -doo 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 -doo, boolean multiplication right and it's going to use the addition um, over here addition right and now I just need to make this an end an end and a true over here so if you have a true over here and you put the identity element over here then the result is going to be true right so the the first one is going to be unchanged and the same thing with the false if you have a false you combine it with the identity element which is which is true there it's not, it's not going to be changed right so false is going to come out right so therefore the unique identity element is true let's see if it compiles what did that do wrong what's this age where does this age come from it's a rig rig not rig whatever this is uh, boolean addition is already defined as object boolean addition. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Um, here, this one boolean multiplication like this. So we can go into the group theory suite over here and we can actually do, let's say, let's say over here, like, like that, right? So we're going to have a boolean addition which is a rig rig and over here we're gonna have boolean addition and the same thing was the multiplication boolean multiplication and we should see that all the laws hold it's obviously for booleans booleans there we go all right so if the tests are green then um, the the laws are satisfied and it is actually a, a rig and the reason I showed you rigs is actually um, that in um, um, in, in the so-called uh, Curry Howard, Curry -Howard uh, Lumbach uh, isomorphism, where it's shown that that uh, uh, logic and uh, algebra and also uh, category theory that they're basically basically the same. They're they're isomorphic to each other. Um, this isomorphism that people talk about, if you ever heard about it, uh, if not, don't worry. If you ever heard about it, they they also say that it only goes up to a rig, and now you know exactly what a rig is. All right, so we could keep uh, digging uh, deeper and deeper into the group theory, but this video is already way too long so uh, I'm just gonna say a few things uh, the first thing is that um, this math library that we created is obviously just for education purposes if you're doing something uh, that is actually you know um, uh, math like then I highly recommend you to check out Spire which is a math library for for Scala okay uh, but you know don't use this one <laughs> okay uh, let me say a few more things the first one is the current implementation of, of this math library that we created it actually has an issue with with uh, type class coherence because remember uh, type classes are defined for a type but algebraic structures are not just defined for a type uh, which is a set of values but also for an operation as we have seen for example for integers we actually end up having um, two monoids right so we have this set of values which is integers right but we have two operations addition and multiplication and both of them form a monoid which means that if you go for example to this suite this suite and if we go down and I'm going to create a uh, test somewhere um, I'm just gonna add it over here right so if you have a list of two and four right and I'm just gonna call aggregated right which monoid is, is gonna be picked up the addition or the multiplication let's see should be I think it's I think it's the addition yes I won it's green it's the addition right so even though if we go to um, to uh, ba -ba -ba, to group theory for example no not to group theory to uh, to the package right even though uh, the where is it even though the addition is a ring and the multiplication is a monoid. It actually picked uh, the addition, right? It's actually a bit, a bit involved. Uh, it actually surprised me the first time I saw it. Um, but uh, what Scala is doing is if you have uh, multiple instances that are considered in the implicit resolution, then the function overloading, uh, overloading um, uh, semantics kick in. And so the same, the same thing is picked as, uh, as if it was a, a function overload, right? So this means that a list of 2.4 aggregated actually picked the uh, int addition right which 
should be six, right? I think I called it int addition, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. And if we have multiplication, right? If we choose another one, multiplication should be eight like this, right? So there are two ways to, uh, to, to aggregate lists in this case. The way this issue is mitigated in Spire is by realizing that we're dealing with a nominal type system. And if you are dealing with a nominal type system and you want to make two types distinguishable, well, just give them two different names. So in Spire, you have uh, not just a monoid, but you also have an additive monoid and you have a multiplicative monoid. And so instead of function like aggregated, we would have, for example, two functions. Uh, one will be called sum, which would need the, uh, the additive monoid, and the other one will be called product, which needs the um, multiplicative monoid, right? And in fact, the Scala standard library is doing something similar. They have a numeric type class. And let me actually show you this. So if I open the console, if I open Scala over here, and if I have a list of, what did we use? Two and four, I believe, right? Then I can call sum. And you can also do uh, product, right? But as soon as you have something that is not numeric, like for example, string, like an empty string or a hello, right? Then you can't do sum and you can't do, I believe you also can't do product, right? Because it's, there is no instance of, of the numeric type class for uh, for strings, okay? So uh, there we go. Another solution to this problem would be uh, to use type tags um, or, or, or tag types, but, but we have never used them uh, before in my channel. So um, I'm not gonna use them until I make a video about them, so. There we go. Now, all that we talked about today is quite interesting, but it is also very, very useful. For example, associativity, which is a property defined on, on monoids, it gives us parallelism for free. In fact, I'm actually going to show you this. Check this out. We stumbled on futures uh, by the end of the of the monoid series. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a test over here. I'm going to call it uh, monoids are awesome like this. Monoids are awesome like that. Okay, in fact, maybe we can uh, switch to running only the uh, list suite. Uh, let's see, test only user dot list suite like this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, I'm going to have a string over here, right? Uh, so I'm going to have the characters from A to from A to L, right? Which is exactly twelve characters. Make string. Okay, so what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a list of A not a list of A, I'm going to call it, I'm going to have a list called A, it's a list of characters, it's just a list of A, B, C, D, okay, and I'm going to have, like that, I'm going to have B, C, D, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, in fact, for this one, I'm going to have three elements, hold up, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and L. So this this is one way of grouping the characters in, in the string. And there's also another way, All right? So I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna bring it down. So this grouping is gonna be called X, right? So it's gonna be X, Y, Z. So in this case, I'm gonna have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, G, H, I, J, K, L. Right. So what we have learned is that uh, associativity basically gives us uh, different different ways of, of grouping things. So and we can go and say, if I have a list of these lists, right? So list of A, B, C, D, right? And if I call aggregated on them aggregate it and after that I say make string right then it should be a string small string obviously and by the way we're calling uh, make string on our lists even though we don't have make string and what is happening is that the in, an implicit conversion kicks in that we have defined in foldable right somewhere at the bottom of foldable and we can say that there is a view from foldable to traversable so this is what's happening and this is why we can call make string on on, on our list okay so if we have this group and if we have another group of X, Y, and Z, right? So the order has to has to be correct, but the grouping doesn't matter, right? If we have aggregated dot make string should be should be string, right? Because these groups are the same, right? So list of A, B, C, D dot aggregated is the same as list of X, Y, Z dot aggregated. 
okay all of this is, is is the same stuff right and i just said that you know because we can group them the way we want we can actually uh i can actually show you this with parallelism right so if i'm going to go here i'm going to say f of a which is going to be a future of a list of character uh which is going to be a future of a copy that a bunch of times gonna have whoops gonna have b c d over here we don't need this one a b c D. And by the way, for futures to work, we need a few few things. We need to import, we need to import Scala dot concurrent, and we also need an execution context, right? So implicit val ec, which is an execution context dot global. We have never talked about uh, parallelism um, in depth, but we already stumbled on futures by the end of the monads playlist. So, so now what we can do is we can use a full comprehension, right? Those futures are basically monads, right? Like that. All right, this comes from A. Okay, so now we're gonna have B, C, and D, right? So if we rip out all of them, put them in a list, A, B, C, D, call aggregated on them, aggregated two dot make string should be should be string. Right? So if we do it if we do it like this, if we group them like this, or if we group them like that. You know, we, we have we have a guarantee uh, that the result will be the same, right? Because you know, laws, right? Mathematical laws, they apply. X, Y, Z, Z. Okay, so we don't need the D. We don't need the D over here, right? Okay, so A is an X. This is a Y, and this is a Z like this. That should still be. That should still work. In fact, we could even go further and define a monoid for, for, for futures. The problem is that um, our algebraic structure, it actually is going to try to compare the futures. Uh, so that's not going to work because they, this is not how equality in futures um, actually works. So I'm going to comment this one out for, for, for just for a bit. I'm going to go back to the list suite and I'm going to go and I'm going to create a, a monoid over here, right? So I'm going to say, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, let's do it inside over here, right? So let's do implicit def. I'm going to call it combination t arbitrary right but also monoid right so if t has an arbitrary and it also has a monoid then we can create a new monoid for a future of t uh, also let's use a kind of used to using using a okay right like this okay so now we can do final override override protected lazy lazy val arbitrary which is an arbitrary, ah, I spell it right, uh, future of t equals implicit, implicitly arbitrary of future of t, like this. Okay, so now what we can do is we can do final override lazy val operation, which is a closed, we don't have it over here, closed, uh, binary operation for futures of t. And it's gonna look like this. So if we have one future, second future, then we can use a full comprehension, right? Where we have the A1 that we take out from, I'm gonna, yeah, A1 that we take from F1. And we have the A2, which we take from F2, right? Let me scroll down and now we can yield. And what we're yielding is uh, the stuff from the monoid, right? So because we, have, because we have a monoid, this means that we can do A1 combine A2. This is exactly what what we want and uh because it's a monoid we also need the identity element right so we go final override lazy val unique identity element which is a future of t which is just going to be a future of t right and we pass in the monoid of t dot unique identity element right so we're getting getting uh getting out the monoid uh using the unique identity element over there uh i switched to using t everywhere jesus okay hold up do, 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 like this like that okay a there we go okay future of a so now we don't even we don't even need to use this comprehension because we have we have a monoid for future so we can go over here and we can say list of so before we said uh list of uh a b c d right so now we can go and say list of f a f b fc fd we can just call aggregate it on it and uh whatever comes out we can just map to should be should be string and we can do the same thing for f of x, f of 
y f of z like this and it still should be green all right let me create a bit more space so that you can see the whole thing and pause the video to to look at it but it's actually kind of simple um one one, one different thing was that it actually needs needs a mono to work and um also it needs uh, you know execution context and stuff so uh, it works because i defined it inside of this test where we have this execution context and since we already have uh, talked about monads in my uh, other playlist uh what i'm also going to show you is that monads are actually uh, monoids or the other way around um no actually monads are, are monoids not the other way around okay so we have monads over here so if i I, um, if I define the monoid again, uh, this time I'm actually going to use T, and I'm going to say, okay, so it's defined in terms of unique identity element, which is just a T, and an operation, which takes one T and another T, create a bit more space, creates uh, two Ts like, like that. Okay, so if this is a monoid, and if you remember how a monoid looks like, uh, now you're going to find out why it's called a monoid, because it's just basically a pun on monoids, because a monoid is a monoid. So uh, if you have a monoid for T, but this time the T must, must have a hole, right? And what is a monoid? Monoid has a pure of A, which has a function which takes an A lazily and produces a T of A, okay? And it has a flat map, which has A, B, right? And it's a curved function, so it takes T1 which is a t of a and it takes and it takes a function which is gonna um, okay so this function is gonna take an a and produce a t of b and the whole thing is going to produce a t of b so this function goes from a to t b right so i'm going to call it a a t b right so if you look at this and if you just uh you know start to uh to to refactor this a little bit right for example uh we could say that this one is curried right and uh, we could say that uh, this is not just a t this is a function from uh from from basically thin air to t right so this is just a, a thunk and we can do this over here as well and we can give them uh you know same names right it's going to start it's, it's going to start looking looking pretty much uh pretty pretty similar okay so uh basically it's the whole thing is still going to compile right so they're so, so similar and, and they have exactly the same laws because monads are actually monads, right? So monads also have the associativity law, they have the left identity, they have the right identity, right? So it's basically exactly the same thing. It's just that there's also this A that is threaded through the entire monad, right? So there is nothing over here, but there's essentially an A over here, which pops up over here. Over here, we have the same thing. We're starting, we're starting with some sort of T, but it's a T of A. And then we have a function, in this case, from nothing to T, and in this case, from A to T of B, right? So there, there's another hole, so the hole, the hole also changes. All right, so this is actually all I wanted to show you for today. So uh, I'm going to remove a few things, like, for example, this uh, this test for, uh, for monads, uh, which starts over here. And also the one with the futures, because I want to re-enable um, re our Scala check stuff. All right, so I want to go and um, i'm actually going to leave this one over here uh, i want to go and re-enable the check over here right because uh, as always we want to commit uh commit everything so i'm just going to go through everything and i'm going to make sure that uh, that everything looks fine and then we'll get it committed for instance i'm going to remove all of these reports stuff right that was just an example so i'm going to remove the reports and i'm going to remove the test for the reports which is over here this one yeah this one like that there we go like this Yep. All right. So I just looked through everything and it, it, it feels like we, we have covered everything. Okay. So I'm going to close everything. Um, I'm actually going to exit from here. Are we actually running all the tests? We should run all the tests once, one more time. Okay. Yeah. Everything is green. So now we can do, I'm going to open this actually. So we see the things disappear, uh, get commit hyphen am. I'm going to call it, I'm going to call it video. 29 by the way if you're joining just now the numbers are numbers are wrong basically every time i committed something i incremented that number but in fact this is the video 35 i think or so uh, okay so i'm just going to call it group group theory like this and i'm going to push it unlock my key there we go like this it's been pushed yeah cool so now i can actually remove the full screen i can go over here and I can press on commits and we should see one one more commit group theory in which we touched so many things probably again touch the build file touch the foldable but basically edit aggregate it uh, change the change the imports and uh, change the for all in the beginning um, list yeah we just added the arbitraries uh, set the same thing algebraic structure the whole thing 
uh, the group theory, right? So now you can go over here and you can, um, you know, you can see the entire structure. Uh, you have magma, you have semi-group, you have monoid, group, abelian group, rung, ring, and also you have um, the uh, rig and the semi-ring, okay? Uh, what else? Uh, so we created the math library package with all the, all the properties. And um, what else? Group theory suite. Yes, that's fine. List suite, fine. Yes, the tests. Yes, set suite. Uh, we remove the stuff from the from the user package from from the test. All right, yeah. So that's pretty much all I got for you today. I'm sorry, as always, that this video got way too long. It's been Vlad, devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did. Subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you find my videos valuable, consider supporting me on Patreon. And most importantly, take care.